Welcome to another Mr. James Accounting Tutorial. This time we are looking at Accounting Unit 1 of KEEP and uh, I'll be doing the entire series of past paper from 2013 right down to 2019. And there was no paper in 2020. But A. Eh, Outline the main objective of general purpose financial reporting according to the IESB framework. The main objective of general purpose reporting is to provide information about financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity which is useful to users in making informed decisions. Part 2. Explain each of the following limitations of financial statements. Use of accounting policies and use of estimates and aggregation. Use of accounting policies. Companies, even in the same industry, may use different accounting policies for such matters as providing for depreciation, valuation of inventory, doubtful debts, revenue recognition, etc. We want to note here that um, what we are looking at is limitations. Okay. These accounting policies have an impact on the measuring of profit and the valuing of assets in the financial statement. There are implications for accuracy and reliability of the financial statement since companies are permitted to exercise a fair degree of subjectivity in selecting their accounting policies. And this has implications for uniformity and comparison. They are also permitted to depart from standards if the departure is justified by the nature of the business. Coming up next, use of estimates and aggregation. Use of estimates. Use of estimates are subjective. Different accountants will arrive at different amounts and values. These estimates are based on the conservatism principle and therefore as external users may not be able to determine the value of an item or even the worth of the business with any kind of accuracy. Use of aggregation. Financial statement preparation is a process of aggregation. Now, what is aggregation? Aggregation simply means you are lumping together a set of small items to make one large item. For instance, in your um, balance sheet, there's an item they call property, plant, and equipment. What they do is they lump all three property, plant, and equipment together to get one figure. And um, that figure is made up of property, which is a set of small items, again, added together to get a figure for property. And then you have one for plant, similar, and one for equipment, similar. So the, by the time you get the, the total for property, plant, and equipment, you are not sure of the details involved in that figure. Okay, so according to the materiality concept, a large number of items are lumped together so that a smaller number of items are reported in the financial statement. Users, in principle, prefer details rather than aggregation of their decision making. Aggregation results in loss of details and information. Distinguish between accrual basis accounting and cash basis accounting. We have two columns, one for cash basis and one for accrual basis. Cash basis of accounting reports transactions which involves cash received and paid. 
And on the other hand, we have accrual basis of accounting reports transaction at the time of the occurrence. Whether the cash is received or paid is not a consideration. Cash basis records revenue when the cash is collected. It takes no account of what time that is. Accrual basis records revenue when the sale is made or the service provided. Okay, no account is taken of when the cash is paid. Cash basis records expenses when the cash is paid. Does not take into consideration the time again. Accrual basis records expenses when they are uh, included. Okay, this uh, uh, basis takes account of the time when the transaction occurred. Coming up next, part two. Part two, identify two reasons why an organization should use accrual basis instead of cash basis accounting. They require two, I have given you four here, reasons for using accrual basis of accounting. Accrual basis is required by GAP and IFRS. All right, GAP means general, generally accepted accounting practice and IFRS means International Financial Reporting Standard. Okay, so these standards and practices uh, require that you use accrual basis of accounting. GAP is the local one that your country uses and in IFRS as the one that you get from international accounting standards. Accrual basis records both cash and credit transactions. Okay, so if you have a business that uses just mostly cash and hardly ever enter into any credit transactions, then you will not be advised to run a accrual basis system it would not be economical for you and you would choose to operate a cash basis system accrual basis is more accurate and complete when computing net income the reason it is more accurate and complete is because it uses both the cash and the credit transactions uh, that makes it more accurate when uh, computing the net income. Accrual basis includes the cash basis. Okay, as you can see, both uh, cash and credit transactions are included in the accrual basis. Part C. We are required to prepare journal entries to record the 2017 transactions for Stevens Limited. Now, this you should note here that journal entries appeared in all seven years that we um, would have studied. If Stevens Limited had the following equities and liabilities as at 31st December 2016, and we are given the equity and the long term liability section of the balance sheet. And we are told the following transaction occurred during 2017. On the 3rd of January, bonus issue of shares, one for four. 1st of April, issue 20,000 ordinary shares, 50 cents for 150. 30th of September, redeem 50,000 preference shares at par with a new issue of 100,000 ordinary shares at par of 50 cents. 28 November, redeem the total 9% debenture at par. Okay, so we look at the first journal entry. We need some workings for it. One for four, take the 100,000 from here, at 50 cents per value. So we divide it by the 50 cents and we'll get 200,000 ordinary shares. 
we divide that by four, and we'll get 50,000 is the issue. You're going to issue 50,000 bonus shares. Now, bonus shares, you do not get any cash for it. Okay, the shareholders receive the shares free of charge and um, you finance it out of the retained earnings or the reserves. So 50,000 by 0 0.5 it would be equal to $25,000 worth you're going to take out of the reserve. It's a way of capitalizing the reserve or turning them into shares. So the first general entry on the 3rd of January will debit retain earnings 25,000, credit ordinary shares 25,000 to issue the bonus shares one for four held. So that's one way of doing it. You can do it another way as well. You can take the uh, share value out of the share premium. So you can use this 20,000 first and then take 5,000 out of the retained earnings, okay? And that's ordinary share capital again. All right, on the 1st of April, we issue 20,000 ordinary shares at five, at 150. So that would be 20,000 by 150 gives us 30,000. So we'll get 30,000 in cash. The shares are worth 10,000, 20,000 by 50 cents. The difference would make up a share premium of 20,000. So the narrative is to 20,000 shares at 150. Okay, coming up next is the rest of the journal entries. On 30th of September, we redeem 50,000 preference shares at par with a new issue of 400,000 ordinary shares of 50 cents. So the 50,000 shares is at par, and par is $1, right? The preference shares, where the preference shares 2017, $1 par, right? So that would be 50,000. To get the 50,000, you sold ordinary shares of 50 cents. So the journal entry is debit preference shares to remove it from preference shares with 50,000 and you credit ordinary shares with the 50,000. Notice that the 100,000 ordinary shares that you issued is also equal to the 50,000 that you raised. So the cash that you raise here knocks off against the cash that you paid off here. So you can make one entry. Redeem preference shares with new entry, new issue of ordinary shares. On the 28th November, redeem the total 9% debenture at par. That is here, 80,000. So just pay it off. 9% debenture would be debited to knock off this balance here and we credit the cash that we paid out. Redeem debentures by cash payment. Okay, coming up next is part D. So stick around. Stevens Limited traditionally uses manual accounting system. Describe how the introduction of an integrated computerized accounting system will impact the company in terms of recording information, access to records, and independent internal verification. We'll look at each one of those three in turn. First, we take recording information and we will have faster posting and retrieving of data because they are doing things mechanically. So more accurate and efficient entry and retrieval for use. Okay, the reason we process data in the first place is so that we can retrieve it later for use in decision making. The use of accounting packages to automate processes can 
produce more timely information. So you can get accounting packages for bank transactions, for inventory transactions, for accounts receivable, for creditors. Okay, you name it, you can get an accounting package for it and they automate it and produce more timely information. You can create your own source documents. Okay, so there will be improvements, in fact, from the source document to the output of your financial statement. Some employees may need retraining. Okay, and some may become redundant. It's a sad fact, but it does happen. Up next, part two. Stick around for it. Part two, access to records. Those documents still need to be stored in safes and cabinet with restricted access. Okay, so your source documents your checkbooks and so on, would still need to be stored in safe and cabinet, and you will re restrict access to those. Uh, access will be restricted by passwords, locked devices, locked doors, cabinets. However, it's economical for you to restrict it. You would want, must, but you must restrict access. At the preparation stage, all employees may have access and make changes to data. As when you are putting in the, the, the data, you should have access to the system. And uh, if you make mistakes or, or errors while putting in the data, you should be able to make changes at that stage, the preparation stage, at the cap tier stage. At the usage stage, some employees will have restrictions to make changes. Okay, those who are not involved in decision making and so on, you cannot make changes to the data. You can just read it. Okay. Up next, independent internal verification. Stick around. Part three, independent internal verification. Senior personnel not involved in the CAPTIA preparation or entry of data should verify the information. That's what is meant by independent internal verification. The person doing it must be a senior person and he must not be involved in these areas. And uh, he must be from within the organization. Accountants, for instance, will double check information using control accounts, trial balances, and reconciliation. Senior employees at a distant location is going to check on the information for accuracy. Okay, so this, he is not within the uh, office itself, maybe in an office at another location of the same building, and he's going to check on your on the information produced by those involved in the data capture and preparation of data. Software itself could provide a list of data which which employee prepared it and what are the controls and so on. Okay, that brings us to the end of the module if you have not yet subscribed, you should take the opportunity to do so now. Come in this week. We will begin Module 2. So be on the lookout for it. Thank you for viewing. Hope to see you in the next video.